Hi everyone and welcome back to Switch Up. Now today we have an exciting opportunity from PCube to be able to bring you all the information about Curse of the Sea Rats. You might have seen reviews from friends like Switch Corner who did mention that there was a bit of an issue near the end of the game but thankfully the day one patch is said to fix that problem. Which is really good news for you because obviously the game releases on the 6th of April. Now today, obviously with a sponsor video, we're not going to talk about individual scores for sections. Hopefully though, we can give you a bit of a deep dive into the mechanics, the overall layout of the game and the visuals and performance. We've got just five days left to save 5% on your eShop credit over at switchup.gg using code switchup. The end is nigh, my friends. All right, what is Curse of the Sea Rats all about? And a big thanks to PQ for sponsoring this episode. Well, let's find out. All right, let's start off with the price and whether it's available physically. Now, yep, this one can be purchased physically and you'll be pleased to hear that it isn't some limited run. You can pick this up in most good retailers. The Nintendo eShop price, there is a 10% pre-order discount, but that only goes on for the next 30 hours with its RRP being £16.99 and the other prices you can see on your screen now. Now, quick note here, personally, I do like to see digital versions being cheaper than the physical version. Like obviously it would be nice for both versions to be the lower price, but it makes sense to me where you don't have the costs of production to offer a slightly reduced price for that digital version. So yeah, hats off to PQ for that one. The game fits into a 6.6 gigabyte download and it has one to four player local co-op. As far as times for completion, well, you're looking at around 12 hours. If like me, you have your daughter along for the ride for some of the gameplay, then it may be a little longer or Glenn. <laughs> So in regards to the story then, it goes that you are one of four prisoners of the British Empire who have subsequently been turned into rats by an evil witch. You need to try and find this character and capture her in order to have yourself turn back into human form. And don't forget, Glenn, as well as this, you're also trying to recapture Timothy, who is the Admiral's son. So it's a bit of a rescue mission. Now, I mentioned four characters just now. If you're playing with more than one player, obviously you can uh, choose these characters between you. And in a strange way, it almost plays out like uh, like an old Turtles beat em up, not in terms of the gameplay, but in terms of that character selection. You kind of have your fast character, your one with range, your brawler, so you can find one that suits you. Yeah, that's a good point. As Glenn says, each character's got different weapons and abilities, and they each have their own individual skill trees, but there is a shared pool of experience that we use when upgrading. I think the best way to look at Curse of the Sea Rats is to think of your standard Metroidvania, but this one does have that emphasis on cooperative play. And if you're after one that's relatively easy, then this might be a good option for you. It's also perfect if you want to introduce your kids to a Metroidvania. That's not to say it's easy, but it is easier. And as I know from the comments, that is exactly what some people are looking for because obviously it has that four player co-op and it's drop in and drop out so anyone can join you. All right, so Glenn and I are now gonna talk you through the gameplay mechanics, pretty much what we experienced in playing it together for a couple of hours. So first and foremost then, let's start with the controls. Now it does control in quite a standard way. You use the left stick or the D-pad, which you were quite pleased to see, Glenn. You have a jump move, a standard attack, there's no heavy attack, and you've also got a button for your magic. Yeah, as well as that, there's also a parry move, which you can perform by pressing A. So uh, you Souls-like fans out there, I'm sure mm. will get a lot of use out of that one. And you can upgrade your uh, abilities as you go along and you do this by using the currency that you'll gain as you defeat enemies and move on through levels uh, there's a character that will pop up every so often that you can then use to to upgrade those abilities uh, there's a skill tree there's two in fact for each character one of which is more your standard attacks and the other is your magic however intertwined in that you have your um, add more health add more defense etc etc so the currency here that you'll use for that leveling up that glenn's just talked about is different bits of treasure which makes sense within the setting you can find this in chests that are hidden around each of the areas and you'll need to use your map as this will show key items and different bits and bobs that you need to head towards now as far as the gameplay formula goes you do have things like a double jump which get unlocked you can wall jump off the walls from the start and as i was alluding to at the beginning about it being a slightly more simplistic metroidvania there might be a, a locked door or some other closed off area that you then need to go and find a key for and again as you might expect most of these keys are guarded by some form of boss so let's have a little chat about those yeah so bosses are your larger than life characters that you'll encounter every so often you'll uh, need to obviously whittle down their health bar which you'll see at the bottom of the screen nice and big as you would expect for a boss character they have their standard patterns that you'll need to learn and then obviously avoid them and get your hits in as and when you can 
And yeah, these play out pretty well to be fair, don't they? They're exactly as you would expect them to be. And as Mark said, defeating them will either allow you to progress on further or give you some sort of key slash item to, to make more progress in the game or access uh, previously inaccessible areas. To help you along with these and to try and survive, especially if you're playing with your daughter, not Glenn, you were all right at this, you have different health items that you can access by holding the RZ trigger. Let's look at the visuals and performance then. Firstly, when it comes to frame rates, you're looking at 60 FPS. There is a small amount of variability here. We did notice a couple of dropped frames, but overall it does maintain that quite well. Performance is generally quite solid. There are some loading transitions between areas, and as for bugs and glitches, we didn't notice any in the updated version that we've been playing through. And hopefully, as I say, that bug that was around at the end of the game has been fixed as P-Cube says it has. Artistically though, there's definitely a lot to like here. Yeah, so you have a hand-drawn style. Each of the four characters uh, look different enough from each other. You have uh, the enemies that are appropriate to the uh, the setting, if you like, and you just have that, that kind of nautical theme that I think always does well in games. Someone put down in the comments of your upcoming games video, about the, uh, is it the biker mice from Mars? It kind of reminded them of that, and yeah, I, I can see that. That's actually a really good shout. There's one character in particular that I can I can <laughs> see the, the, the resemblance, definitely. It was a great game for that on the Super Nintendo, by the way, a racing game, really good fun. Had a Snickers uh, tie, which was odd, but there you go. <laughs> It does have some parallax scrolling, but again, the overall game, like I said, it uses a more simplistic overall aesthetic as well. Some of the character designs and bosses do look really nice, as you can see from the footage. Perhaps one of our favorite things about it, I'd say, Glenn, is the uh, audio and general musical score. Yeah, I really enjoyed the music. It had a, a lovely um, whimsical feel to it, and it, it really did set the action or, or match to the action in a way that that made just enhanced the gameplay didn't it really you know mm. it's definitely i think it was it was the highlight of the game for me the music it really did fit very well yeah totally agree it has that nautical feel but there's also almost like um i don't know sea shanty type flavor to the experience On top of that, there is voice acting for all the characters as well. And yeah, it's a reasonably well presented package. All right, so hopefully that's everything you need to know about the game, but please do let us know down in the comments. As I said at the start, we'll be giving away a copy of this one to one lucky person down there who foolishly wants to add more to their backlog. All you need to do is let us know your favorite Metroidvania and why exactly you like it. And it can't be Hollow Knight, that's cheating. <laughs> no, only joking, it can be Hollow Knight. A big thanks to PCube once again, and all of you that enjoy the content, stick around if you enjoy Enjoyed it and save yourself 5% using code SWITCHUP over at switchup.gg. Thanks to our Patreons and members, you guys are amazing, keep the channel alive, and uh, yeah, for all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch Up. Cheers guys, see ya!